Do you remember the 80s and the 90s? We had female action heroes back then. Sarah Connor in The Terminator, Lola in Run Lola Run, and Ellen Ripley in the Alien movies. Ellen Ripley had a shaved head, used a flamethrower, massacred aliens, and saved the human race. Did we think it was weird that a woman was doing this? No! We just accepted that she was a lesbian and got on with our lives. If you want something done properly, get a man to do it. But if you're tired of nagging your man to do it, get a gender non-conforming female. And the main villain in the Alien movies was a female alien, which is how you knew she was properly evil. As any nightclub bouncer will tell you, the worst fights are the ones between two women. That's why that movie is a classic. I'm just surprised the Queen Alien didn't try and stab Ripley with a stiletto whilst her mates in the background scream, Tanya, don't do it, it's not worth it. All those movies had a positive thing to say about men and women. Have you ever been mistaken for a man? No. Have you? <laughs> oh, <Ow. guess. laughs> it is too bad. <laughs> but now relations between the two sexes have gone down the toilet, if you believe the movies anyway. The Barbie film demonstrates this perfectly. It explains why society without men is far better and more harmonious. This obviously is a load of bollocks, as anyone who's worked with women will tell you. They're all three pina coladas away from tearing each other's hair out. I love women, but if they're all so loving, then why is it on a night out the fat one always ends up crying? There was only one token fat girl in the Barbie movie, because Barbie's audience is white women and gay men. They saved the fat ladies for the hip hop videos. Barbie really was unrealistic trash. It's set in Venice Beach, and I didn't see one crackhead taking a dump on the street whilst mainlining fentanyl into his nutsack. Where was the homeless psychopath harassing you for money? Where were the needles? This is way more unrealistic than a plastic doll coming to life. And it sets kids up with fake expectations of what LA is really like. Hollywood has not just drunk the Kool-Aid, it's guzzled from the barrel, then taken the dregs and made suppositories so it can be screwed from both ends. Michael Sheen recently said that only Welsh actors should play Welsh characters. How many Welsh characters can you name? There have been about three interesting people to come from Wales in their entire history, and one of them is a dragon. Have we now come to the point where only dragons can play dragons? Are dragons now part of an oppressed minority? Will we see the rise of DLM? Comedian David Baddiel said that Robert Oppenheimer should have been played by a Jew. I think for maximum authenticity, he should have been played by someone who's autistic. Every physicist in the history of the planet is autistic. Unless the actor is a mathematical genius with appalling social skills and an inability to make eye contact, I ain't interested. He needs to be so autistic that the only way he can communicate is through Morse code. And if he isn't, then this is another disgusting example of neurodivergent washing. Peter Dinklage has taken the opposite tack. He's arguing that actors with dwarfism should not be cast as dwarfs in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So an actor with dwarfism is depriving other actors with dwarfism of well-paid Hollywood roles. Talk about pulling up the tiny little stepladder. Now, there's just one dwarf in the Seven Dwarfs. Isn't this just tokenism? Will we call it Snow White, Six Blokes and a Dwarf? Because that sounds less like a kids movie and more like a porn movie. Snow White is played by an actor of Latin heritage. Now, I'm a massive fan of the Dusky Maiden. My dating history looks like a Hollywood casting agent's wet dream. All brown women and no dwarfs. But shouldn't Snow White be... Snow White? Is it really an authentic choice to have a lady who looks like she can dance a mean salsa, a temper that could destabilize entire nations, and hairier than Osama bin Laden? These are all qualities that I find highly desirable in a woman, but maybe not for the character of Snow White? However, Rachel Zegler is half Colombian, so maybe Snow White refers to that country's greatest export. Who wouldn't want to see Snow White meets Narcos? Maybe Prince Charming is in the CIA and will rescue her from Pablo Escobar. The actress who plays Snow White has come under fire for this interview. I just mean that it's no longer 1937 and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is... She's not going to be yeah. saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave and true. And so it's just a really incredible story for I think young people everywhere to see themselves in. 
I have sympathy for her. She's 22 years old. What 22 year old doesn't have dementedly liberal opinions? That's what you should be like at 22. Then you realize that all polyamory left you with is badly dyed hair, some terrible sexual experiences and chlamydia. The worst people in life are those who are conservative when they're barely adults. Go have some fun instead of living your life like a Ben Shapiro tribute act. She also branded Prince Charming a creep. If someone calls himself charming, it's probably because they've got something to hide. It's like when a used car salesman calls himself Honest Dave. If you call yourself something, it's highly likely you're not that thing. And he did kiss her when she was asleep. I'm just surprised that his name wasn't discovered on the flight log for Epstein's Island. Or at the very least, describe himself as a male feminist. Instead of dogpiling her, maybe we should allow her to grow up and do what all liberal women do when they mature. Marry a conservative. Because there's nothing liberal women love more than hearing the words no backed up with facts and logic. They love a little bit of Ben Shapiro from a man who can pay his own way and grow a proper beard. Which is the main reason why I'm not a conservative.